Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. It's, it's um, an honor to be able to share information about our program with everyone. And um, I look forward to giving you information, and then if anyone has questions um, at the end, um, I look forward to answering them to the best of my ability. So uh, we are an AmeriCorps program, the AmeriCorps Watershed Stewards Project. And um, we are a special project of the California Conservation Corps and are also administered by California volunteers and sponsored by the Corporation for National and Community Service. I know that's a lot of organizations to throw at you, um, but I will refrain from going into great detail about that because in reviewing Morgan's presentation, she goes into more detail and um, I don't want to be redundant here. So I'm going to keep moving on and I think your questions will be answered in a little while about who those organizations are. So we were an AmeriCorps program. Um, AmeriCorps is essentially it's the domestic Peace Corps. Um, it's a national service program that provides people with opportunities to serve their communities in a variety of ways. And um, the specifics that AmeriCorps supports is education, public safety, health, and then there's the environment, which of course speaks to our program. Um, we are an environmental AmeriCorps program. Our fiscal agent is the California Conservation Corps. And um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Conservation Corps, um, they are a workforce development program that offers young men and women an opportunity to get life skills and um, training and work hard in environmental conservation, fire protection, and emergency response. And before, they are our fiscal agents. So we are a special program of, of the CCC, the, Con the Conservation Corps. And there's our program, the Watershed Stewards Project. And um, we began in 1994. Um, the idea was conceived here in Northern California. Our hub is in Fortuna, which is along the North Coast, uh, pretty close to Eura, for those of you that are a little so familiar with the North Coast. Um, and we partner with natural resource professionals, industry like timber and um, ranching and um, different types of private industry, government, um, teachers, and volunteers. Finally, um, I'm going to give you information about our current program year. We are in year 17 of our program, and we started October 4th. We started our 17th year, <coughs> and currently these are our key project partners. Um, these are funders as well as Placement. So organizations that we place our AmeriCorps members with to get experience. Um, and so these organizations range anywhere from the border down to currently we go as far south as the San Luis Obispo. Um, I won't read each and every um, partner outline. You can see we have a wide variety and a plethora of different partners. <laughs> And currently, um, we have 55 AmeriCorps members serving 25 placement sites um, throughout 11 different counties in two communities from San Luis Obispo up to the Oregon border. And there again is a list of the 20 communities that our members are working in with um, the organizations that they're placed with. So are our members doing? Um, our AmeriCorps members are helping with watershed recovery efforts through a variety of activities from data collection, data analysis, uh, assessment, data compilation, and restoration projects. Um, they also have a component to their term of service which includes environmental education and outreach as well as different professional training opportunities. Some of the efforts that our members work on are state-of-the-art watershed and fisheries monitoring techniques. So things such as assessments and surveys and trapping. Um, our program focuses on anatomy, so um, our members are working in coastal watersheds um, that anadromous anatomous fish. So not every single placement site is focused on fish, but many of them are, and the watersheds that they work on um, one of the criteria for our program is they have to be in anadromous watershed. 
So watershed restoration efforts that our members participate in include upslope and in-stream restoration activities such as revegetation projects, in-stream structure implementations, and bank stabilization. And then another component to their term of service is watershed education. And although we do teach K through 12, we do try to focus on third through fifth grade. And so every single AmeriCorps member that comes into our program is required to present a six-visit real science, that's what we call our ed program, real science watershed curriculum in classrooms, um, which provides lessons to the students to better understand watersheds and salmonids. Um, so a couple of pictures here of members being with kids doing different activities. Component is community outreach, and so our um, our AmeriCorps members also educate the general community as well as students in larger type events like education fairs and hatchery tours, um, as well as pre conferences and things like that. Another component of our program includes volunteer recruitment, and in service eleven we started. Um, we started a project, it was actually an idea of one of our AmeriCorps members to implement a hands-on restoration project in their community where they would be required to recruit and manage volunteers, solicit donations, and do media campaign. So that the community would then get a sense uh, or an opportunity to hands-on restoration in their own watersheds. And so um, members coordinate. Coordinate, uh, each every single member will coordinate one individual service project and examples of what kinds of hands-on restoration projects they do include cleanups and um, tree plantings and, um, and removal of invasive plants but it's to get the community involved in what we're doing and getting them connected with their ownership and learn about what they can do to help make it here Finally, our program encompasses another area of uh, member training where we provide professional trainings to all the members so that when they get done with their term of service, they've had opportunities to learn and grow and build their resume even more. And so um, some examples of the professional trainings that we provide are Swift Water CPR Wilderness First Aid Training. We provide that with their orientation. And um, in addition to those kind of trainings, we also um, encourage our members to attend one of the Salmonid Restoration Federation, either conference or CONFAB or Chinook Symposium, um, or education, environmental education conferences, things like that where members can go and get a little bit extra um, development in addition to the things that we provide. Service requirements that our members serve a 10 and a half month term and that would total a minimum of 1,700 hours of service. Uh, currently for our service year 17, the program we just started, the dates of our service year began October 4th and they'll run through next August 12th. Um, and, and just to give you an overview, kind of an idea of how much time they spend in each component of the program, um, the watershed assessment and restoration component of the work that our members do takes up approximately 60% of their time. And the education and outreach component is about 25%, trained professional development about 10%, and then the individual service project where they're recruiting and managing volunteers, that takes about 5% of their time. And every placement site is different with regard to how much time members spend in each component of the program. But this is a guideline, um, especially the first one. Our, our, our minimum requirement is that members spend um, approximately 60% of their time um, doing the assessment and restoration activities. The benefits that our members receive through the AmeriCorps program are a monthly stipend of about $1,300 a month, um, 10 and a half months. At the end of their term, if they complete all the requirements of the term, then they would be eligible for an education award of $5,350. While they are 
serving. They have no cost medical insurance. And then there's, in addition, the professional training and networking opportunities that they get throughout their service here. AmeriCorps requires that we tell them what our are going to do collectively throughout a service year. And so this service year, um, we're telling AmeriCorps that our members will survey 2,500 stream riparian and upslope miles to assess water watershed conditions. And actually, that says Northern California, but this is the first year that we're actually expanding down to San Luis Obispo. So that should just say Coastal California. Although, so as far east as Wyoming. Rica. Ours back on. For how long? I don't know. <laughs> okay. That's good. Um, yeah, that's good. will engage 825 community volunteers with focus on hands-on restoration projects. Oh. We'll educate 1,300. <coughs> I think they've got something wrong with the transformer or substation. Something big. Uh -huh. it's too I think someone needs to put their mute button on. Might be a down here or bad pole. You know, it's not yeah, something it's not like that. Big, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, okay. okay. Um, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, and our members will provide 11,500 hours of outreach and education. But the power was widespread again. It's all the way down to ALT. Um, members. Update your little card and then you can give it to me and then I can pay for your for your doctor's appointment. Hello. I, I think you should mention what they've been talking about so that they can uh, that they can know that their their phone isn't on mute. So they've been talking about the transformer and the line down. Yeah. So, um, overall, the program's goal is to develop the next generation of natural resource professionals, and I'm so pleased to say that and then, every time we attend, oh, early, we'll do your evaluation. Okay. Okay. So, um, Excuse me, um, whoever's mentioning evaluations, can you please turn your mic button on your, your mute button? Sounds good. Thank you. Um, so I'm pleased to say that um, of our members that do go on to um, become to resource professionals through networking and professional opportunities that they gain in our program. Um, I wanted to mention is that the California Conservation Corps is talking about trying to replicate our program um, to a certain extent in the Central Valley. That's something that I believe in the fall of 2012. Um, yeah, no, two, yeah, 2011 actually. They were applying for funding to um, replicate our program. And so I, I put vision up here so you could also see in case there are those of you that are in the Central Valley and interested in getting involved. Um, the goal is to, um, to focus on delta fisheries, but also include waterfowl, riparian restoration, and water quality. And the geographic scope of the program would begin in the north, just below the Shasta Dam in Redding, and go down through the watershed surrounding the Golden Trout Wilderness of the current year's Bakersfield. Um, the mission would be to conserve, restore, and enhance California Central Watershed for Future Generations by education with high quality scientific practices. So that's right in line with our program, our WSP mission. So that program would be to train new groups of national re nat resource professionals and lifelong enthusiasts, and to give young people an opportunity to gain hands on experience and other critical job skills. End of my presentation. Uh, does anybody have any questions? If you have questions at this time, you can unmute your phone and ask them, or you can send comments and questions via the chat function. This is Allison Jones in Region 3, or Central Coast. The program was new to this area. Is that? Yes. Um, we have members serving south of San Francisco this year, which we haven't had before. So we're um, way down to San Luis Obispo. And um, just out of curiosity, who would we contact to just be aware of what that program was doing or what the people were doing in this area? Me. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I've got that then. Thank you. Yes. Uh, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to talk with you more about what we're doing in the area. And um, when you say Region 3, Region 3 with who? Central oh, Water Board. Sorry. Central okay. Water. I just wanted to make sure I, I understood. Yeah, I would love to talk with you more um, and give you more information about what our members are doing down there and if there's some opportunities for collaboration. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a call. Do you do you have my number? Is, is that posted somewhere? Mm, it was. I had. I don't know how I can go back and check. Or you could just give it to us right now, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'll give it to you right now so everyone will have it. Um, our office phone is seven zero seven two five six one. Thank you. Thank you. Do questions for Carrie? Gary. Thank you. Dinner will be Morgan. Or go ahead and access your PowerPoint. Great. I don't see that. No, the Sierra Nevada Miracle Partnership is that up? That's up. We can hear you fine. Thank you. Great. Well, I'm going to jump right in because I have a lot of stuff I'm trying to cover in a fairly short period of time. And like Carrie said, um, there are a lot of different groups that go into making these programs run. So I'm going to try to touch on most of them for you guys. Um, I'm just going to go into a little bit about the SNAP program, the Sierra Nevada AmeriCorps Partnership, uh, a little bit about what we do, how the program is designed, our challenges, and the accomplishments that um, I want to highlight, and then a bit about national service in general and some opportunities to get involved. So Carrie mentioned about AmeriCorps. Um, it's a network of local, state, and national service programs. Um, each year, tens of thousands of Americans serve to meet the country's critical needs, and we're focusing on a few main areas education, public safety, health, and the environment. I think in 2009, we had 89,000 AmeriCorps slots. So um, it's a growing program, lots of people involved. Um, and as you see here at the bottom, AmeriCorps members serve more than 4,000 nonprofits, public agencies, and faith-based and community organizations, which, uh, and this is a really phenomenal number, um, that works out to $6.3 billion worth of AmeriCorps funds basically going to nonprofit and community groups. So um, a lot of them here, big program. But said, um, oops, slide. there's still conceptions about AmeriCorps and I guess national service in general. I just want to highlight um, we're, we're not in any sort of private army or um, there's crazy things thrown around. Uh, force literature, um, really it's um, a really diverse group of folks doing a huge plethora of different types of work. And obviously, um, like our shed stewards, the SNAP program is focused mainly on environmental projects with some environmental education in there as well. So to get a better understanding of AmeriCorps, we can look back a little bit. And it's really rooted in this idea of service that starts with the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 30s. Um, and then from there, we go to the Peace Corps, which um, in, uh, AmeriCorps is like a domestic version of the Peace Corps. And I feel like I hear this from all of my members when they just try to describe what AmeriCorps is to other people. I use it as well. For some reason, everyone knows AmeriCorps or Peace Corps, um, but not as much as AmeriCorps. So um, 1961, you get the Peace Corps. Then with uh, President Johnson and his War on Poverty, you get uh, VISTA, which stands for Volunteers in Service to America in 1964. And finally, under the Clinton administration in 1999, we get the Clinton AmeriCorps. With that, the VISTA program becomes AmeriCorps VISTA, so that's incorporated under AmeriCorps. So really long history, although AmeriCorps has only been around since 1994, it really does have roots that go back quite a ways. And this is a good visual representation of uh, what's going on with AmeriCorps. I'm just going to get my highlighter out here, maybe. I think. Um, so three main 
programs, when you look at the Corporation for National Community Service, which is the umbrella corporation for all of these groups, um, you've got your Learn Serve America, um, Senior Corps, and AmeriCorps. I will admit I don't know too much about Senior Corps or Learn Serve America, but really our focus is down here with AmeriCorps. And um, there's a, a, a distinct separation here, um, just basically do the focus of these two different um, programs. AmeriCorps is really looking at capacity building. So um, again, volunteers in service to America, they're working on poverty issues and um, capacity building. That doesn't necessarily mean, though, that it can't be a environmentally related focus. Uh, the Sierra Nevada Alliance, uh, the group that administers the SNAP program, is not a VISTA member. This or actually to work on energy issues. So a um, little bit different there with the capacity building on this side, and then this side would be direct service. So touch on NCCC, this is the National Civilian Conservation Corps, and uh, this is a residential program for people who are 18 to 24, I believe, and they basically um, specific campus, and um, they go and do whatever project that whole group is going to do. So I believe um, our region, the closest, would be Sacramento. Um, I, again, not super familiar with NCCC, but I do know that they're, um, I think California had the major wildfires a few years ago. Those were some of the American members that got sent to that. So um, big core moving as a group, those sort of projects. What I'm focused on is right here in the state grants. Um, the SNAP program is an AmeriCorps state program, so that means that um, our state commission, which in California is California Volunteers, um, getting from the Corporation for National Community Service, and then our program, we should have a little area here, <laughs> would be right in this area. Um, we get our money from the state commission, which is the state national program, which is for the national and community service. So, lots of different layers. Hopefully everyone's still following because I'm going to add another layer in just a minute. Um, but for just to come back to the SNAP program, um, founded in 2007 by Nevada Alliance, and our mission is to assess and restore impaired watershed habitats and increase community stewardship of the Sierra Nevada watershed through education and volunteerism. So we get all those different layers of different organizations, and then we add in our Sierra Nevada Alliance layer to get to our mission. So Sierra Nevada Alliance uh, is basically our mission is to protect and restore sea land, water, wildlife, and rural communities. Uh, we have three main programs that uh, you can see here. I won't get into too much detail, um, but basically I'll highlight again our member group support program, and that is where this NAP program comes into play. The member group support program works to help bring regional focus to issues that are more than 85 member groups work on and build that capacity and, and really support member groups in any way we can. So back in 2006, um, the South U River Citizens League, the Sierra Nevada Alliance, again, there's so many layers here, <laughs> uh, got together and really designed this AmeriCorps program um, to help build that capacity for our member groups and, and add to their staff and, and what they can get done. That's more layers. Uh, hopefully this will help bring everything together a little bit. And uh, those arrows uh, maybe should be pointing up at this point. We'll start in the middle here with the Sierra Nevada Alliance. And we apply through California volunteers to have AmeriCorps members from the Corporation for National and community service. And once we get that grant, work with our member groups and different conservation organizations and agencies throughout the Sierra to host our 27 AmeriCorps members. That's so for a minute. I think I uh, don't have any questions over here, so hopefully that's clear. Moving on. And uh, to accomplish our mission, we've designed the program so that we have 27 full-time members right now that serve basically full time 40 hours a week to get 1,500 hours in between January and November. And they serve at our host sites. And the host sites really are determining what the member is doing. Um, 
the program, excuse me, I guess the structure for what members need to be doing. Uh, and we'll get into kind of their focuses uh, as far as what they're focusing on. But and the next they're really going to determine the work plan for the year, which we call a service plan. Uh, they're going to provide a site supervisor who really oversees the day-to-day supervision -day mentorship of the member. Uh, sites also provide a cash match. Uh, I'll go into a little bit about funding in a minute, but um, the cash match each site pays for each member that they host helps go to cover costs like member training, member travel, um, health insurance, stipends, there's a lot of costs involved. So um, we get that to help cover the cost so that we can provide a really um, strong program for members and, and really make sure that they're getting the training we want to give them. And again, those host sites are going to apply annually to be a part of the program. Uh, this is a uh, just quick visual representation of the program and our partners. Um, and on right here, you can see the Sierra. Uh, and we have our furthest north member right now in Redding, California, which is represented by this little AmeriCorps patch up there. And then Kernville in the south, all the way down here. So um, we're over four miles apart. And so that presents some challenges in and of itself. Um, very expensive for us to get all of our members together. Uh, the Sierra Alliance, for those of you who don't know, is located in South Lake Tahoe, which is kind of right in this general area. Um, and the majority of our members are serving um, in the central Sierra in this general vicinity. Um, we do have a really wide variety of different types of partners, land trusts, uh, nonprofits, agencies, and some of our partners have really been um, with us since the beginning and are really um, great help us. We're looking at program design options and, and reporting and things like that. So locations to our members. Um, we have been so blessed with just amazing individuals that serve our program. Um, each year we seem to get more and more applications. Granted, um, I'm sure a lot of that is the current economic climate, uh, but we like to think about it. This, uh, our program is great, but um, this year and last year we've had over 250 applications for our 27 members. Um, they're high motivated and skilled. They're coming from throughout the country. For some reason, Michigan is a really hot place for us to get members. Um, all college graduates, and it's not a requirement for our program, but since we have 250 applications, Really, to be competitive in the process, you need to have your grad or a college degree. Um, I have a couple members enrolled with master's degrees as well. Um, and the things we look at when we're trying to decide who we're going to interview and, and bring into our program is experience with volunteering and, and serving their communities. Um, all the members are really passionate about the environment and just making a difference and um, spending, spending some time to serve others rather than themselves. Um, the member really looking to gain on the ground experience, real world experience, put on their resume and be able to take that next step. A lot of them are um, just at college, just finished looking for their first job, or maybe they've been out for a few years and um, haven't really been able to find a job in maybe a source management type field that they really want to get into, so they're coming back. Um, Carrie also mentioned a little bit about member benefits. Are pretty much the same living type in health insurance, their education award once they complete their service, um, and then that technical training that they receive up to um, 340 hours, as well as that real world experience training. So, the type of work members do. And our main focus is watershed restoration and assessment. And really, we're looking for that on the ground restoration piece. So, um, you know, tree planting, monitoring, and here they're taking down a beaver dam. So, um, that's the main focus. We like to have the majority of our members spending the majority of their time in, in this piece. And different projects, we're really in the gamut, but a lot of them are invasive species removal, erosion control projects. Drake stabilization projects, uh, road decommissioning, cattle or other grazing animal exclusions, 
uh, keep around or fire pit dismantling, um, monitoring, fee reduction, really any anything that's going to um, have a positive effect on the watershed, um, we're encouraging our members to complete. And again, the sites are going to be the determine what the members are actually working on. So and to get into a little bit of our results as far as watershed restoration goes, um, between 2007 and August of 2010, uh, members have restored over 6,488 acres of critically important Sierra watershed, as well as monitoring over 700 sites in the Sierra. And when we say 700 sites, those are some sites that members go to each month. So it really is incredible that the amount of work that these guys have done. A set focus for our program is watershed education and outreach. Um, again, a very wide array of what they're going to do under watershed education outreach. And again, it's going to be determined by what the site's working on. Um, we have some sites that are working on invasive species. So you've got our education tool here with Warris the Weed. Um, and one of our members, I believe, must have been last year, um, serving at Friends of Deer Creek, helped put together this bug book, um, which is an amazing publication that came out from Friends of Deer Creek. Other projects include Trout in the Classroom. Um, one of our members went around and did climate change presentations, focusing on adaptation um, to some of the effects of climate change. Um, we have a program in the Southern Sierra called Immerse in the Wild, which is a really incredible program where um, the member is working with uh, youth from LA and other um, communities in that area to bring those kids up to the Southern Sierra and the Sequoia Monument up down there and um, do service green projects and restoration projects. So um, some really great education outreach projects that come out of the SNAP program. And uh, some results here, we've educated more than 52,800 people through our education and outreach efforts. So um, lots of people connected through this project. Volunteer support and recruitment. Uh, Carrie mentioned this is part of her project as well. It's really part of pretty much every AmeriCorps program. Um, we'd like to get volunteers included in whatever projects we're working on. And um, our volunteers come from all walks of life and ages. And I just love this picture. It's great. Um, typically, members are recruiting volunteers for uh, any sort of on-the-ground project they might be doing. Um, a big one that a lot of members are doing with volunteers is a monthly water quality monitoring volunteer project where a group of volunteers comes out each month and goes to different points in the watershed and does some monitoring. 2007 again to 2010, we've recruited more than 5,200 volunteers, so uh, lots of people serving their watershed. So we've added in the last two years. Um, so 2009 and 2010 members have been involved in resource attainment. And it's basically fundraising, but we don't have to call it fundraising because there's very specific stipulations on what members can do with fundraising. So we call it resource attainment to make sure they're really thinking through these activities. Um, basically, members can raise funds and get donations for their specific projects. So um, examples of this sort of thing could be a business donation, maybe they're getting tools, um, garbage bags for cleanup or lunch for members at a uh, or volunteers at an event. So um, lots of donations as well as they can also write grants for their restoration projects or their education projects. Um, resources and activities can only be 10 percent of their hours, so not a big part of hours, but we really felt we wanted to give members this opportunity to spend some time doing this because especially for those folks who want to get involved with this, especially nonprofit work in the future, um, some exposure to fundraising is definitely important. So um, in the two years that they've been able to do this, members have received 68 donations, uh, totally more than $27,000 for their projects. Also a big component is member training. Uh, the SNAP program puts on four trainings a year as a, a program where we get all the members together. And then as well, at each host site, the members are encouraged to um, what sort of training they'll need for their specific projects. And obviously, they'll have their own orientation at each, each site. Um, so the SNAP trainings that we put on are a January training orientation. And basically, this is the first day of their service. We all meet outside Yosemite in Mid Pines and do a week-long training. 
um, cover all the basics of AmeriCorps and um, what they're going to need to know to get their service hours completed and, and recruit volunteers, those sort of things. Then in spring, we come back together, and this is really an opportunity for the members to learn from each other. We do um, some basic fundraising and, again, some more techniques on recruitment, education, but really this is their opportunity to talk to each other about what projects they've been doing, what their successes have been, what their challenges have been. And we have all of our members attend the Sierra Nevada Alliance Annual Conference. It's a really inspiring event, and we have great workshops. We like to have the members there so they can also go and, and be involved with that event. And then we wrap up with the one-day graduation at the end where we talk about kind of those next steps. So I highlighted some of our accomplishments in those slides as far as just the numbers are concerned. Um, but this number is really important to us, this 92 here. Um, since 2007, the program has recruited 92 individuals to serve the Sierra. Um, they, and I think Carrie touched on the exact same thing. Um, our big thing is, is developing that next generation of environmental professionals. And especially in the Sierra where you have a lot of older communities, it's been really exciting for us to bring in some of this youth, youth energy. So members in the SNAP program can be any age, we don't have any age requirements. The majority of the members are mid 20s, and um, it's just been really interesting to kind of get that fresh take and really motivated folks into these organizations and um, having those folks serve the Sierra and being able to be a part of uh, a brand group of individuals into serving the Sierra. So um, we're really proud of that accomplishment in and of itself. Um, we've also served 27 different conservation organizations having a staff um, or a, a AmeriCorps member serve basically as staff for a year there. So um, those are our big highlights that we like to, to put forward is just that um, useful energy to the Sierra and, and building that next generation of leaders. On the flip side, um, some of our challenges um, are, are funding, and that's a big one for us. Based Basically, um, AmeriCorps gives you a grant for three years, and then every year you have to um, try to continue, and then every three years you're applying for another three-year grant. Um, as you go, the amount of money you get from AmeriCorps starts to decrease, and the amount you have to contribute increases. So we're always kind of trying to work with that so that the cash match that our member groups or partners are paying uh, doesn't get to the point where it's cost prohibitive, um, and we're looking you know, at different ideas on um, bringing in more foundation fundraising to help the program. And also, with funding, um, right now the program is, is staffed mainly by myself and a part-time regional coordinator. So between the two of us, we're um, grants and administering the program and taking care of member timesheets, and um, there's a lot to do with just two people. So that's definitely a challenge for us as well. Um, the next thing down there is reporting. Uh, AmeriCorps is a uh, paperwork heavy program. Um, we have monthly reports from each member we need to get as well as timesheets. Um, they have to log all of their results each month um, for each of our different categories. So training and restoration and assessment and uh, education. So there's a lot of different things that we need to get each month. They can quarterly reports. We submit reports to AmeriCorps. We submit files. So there's a lot going on back and forth that takes up a lot of time as well. Next thing on the list is performance measures. This is basically how we report back to AmeriCorps. And um, for any groups that are thinking about possibly starting an AmeriCorps program, this is going to be a big thing um, to consider. Um, our big challenge with this is really finding a good way to um, report our results in the language that AmeriCorps is using. Uh, and, and some of the big things that AmeriCorps is looking for is not only your output, which is easy for us. That's, you know, we had 27 members who restored 6,000 acres. It's that outcome and the percent change and what changed. Um, so like for water quality monitoring, our big issue has been trying to find a way to show a change on the ground with what happened with our water quality monitoring. So that's been something that we've been trying to deal with and, and work with our partners to find a good way to present that to AmeriCorps. But it's, it's, 
you know, I measured the water quality the month, last month and this month, and it's actually worse. You know, we don't want to be reporting that. Um, so we've been having some issues with trying to find ways to do more reporting of the assessment and monitoring piece that goes along with the restoration. Um, but for us, we're really just focusing on the restoration and that assessment and monitoring that obviously has to happen with restoration. Uh, we don't, we haven't really found a great way to, to report some of that. So, and that's definitely been a challenge. And then this last one, the monitoring assessment versus restoration, um, kind of falls into that. We have a lot of um, partners and organizations that want to join that program, but they're really focusing on that monitoring and assessment piece, which is absolutely imperative, but not doing the restoration that follows up with it, they're really going to have a hard time being competitive as far as becoming a SNAP site. So um, those are just some of the challenges that we deal with and, um, and other environmental AmeriCorps programs are um, dealing with some of those same um, performance me measure issues. Um, for um, folks on the phone who might be wondering how they can get involved with AmeriCorps, um, it's a good time. Uh, the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act was signed in 2009, and it really uh, expands the AmeriCorps program in a way that hasn't happened in the past um, since 1994. Uh, the goal is, is to move from 75,000 men serving each year to 250,000 by 2017. So if that actually happens, obviously there's going to be a lot of opportunity for more programs to um, AmeriCorps members and, and to grow. So um, that's definitely exciting. We're hoping that that um, does come up that, you know, by 2017 we have 250,000 AmeriCorps members. That'd be amazing. Um, with other programs, there's the Volunteers and Service to America, again, VISTA. And like I said, it is based on capacity building and low-income communities, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're not environmental. Um, Basically, each state has a VISTA, um, I guess I'll call it a, uh, I don't remember the exact term, but a uh, VISTA coordinator. And if you go on the AmeriCorps website, you can look under VISTA and, and find the court from California. And basically, um, you can email them and just start a conversation about your interest and, and what ideas you have. Uh, and finally, again, back to AmeriCorps. As I said, AmeriCorps grants programs three-year grants, and they do that um, basically by doing putting out an RFA every year, two years, and then taking a year off. So I believe, and to quote me on this, but I believe next year um, will be uh, 2011, they'll be putting out um, an opportunity to apply and create a program, and then the year after that they'll take off, and then the year after that they'll again have um, application process going on. So um, then it's a three-year cycle, um, and if um, that is something that's of interest, it's a, a fairly lengthy process, and they have all the information for it on the California Volunteers website. Um, there's also the opportunity to partner with a uh, program, and basically uh, organizations that are serving Sierra watersheds and focusing on watershed restoration. Uh, and assessment, uh, welcome to apply. Every June we put out a request for applications and it's up on our website and it details how to apply and, and what's required. Um, and then over the summer we get a selection committee together of um, JV Foundation officers from uh, water boards or California um, or Santa Nevada Conservancy, and they determine what sites we'll have for the following year. So if that would be of interest and you're working on sea watersheds, that's definitely an opportunity as well. And then to see if anyone had any questions that I could answer um, before I got into some contact information for everyone. Questions, uh, please unmute your phone. You can ask them quickly. You can also use the chat feature. So if there are any questions, um, but you'll see on your screen um, there are some contact information details here. Uh, my 
email address is up here, as well as the Sierra Nevada Alliance website. Uh, we have our own SNAP page on the Sierra Nevada Alliance website, which has a lot of information about the program. Uh, California Volunteers is on here, and again, that's where you would find all those funding opportunities when they are made available. Corporate National Community Fist, their website, as well as AmeriCorps.gov.